so I'm Ray Paik. I'm a community manager at GitLab, and I have the honor of uh, speaking with Alberto. Uh, I think, I mean, I work with uh, Viterja folks for like five years now. Like, I, I was trying to remember if I've ever done a co presentation with Viterja. I think this is the first time. So, yeah, I, think so. I don't know what, what it took me so long, but here we are. Uh, so, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, being responsive to community contributions. And one of the areas that I started looking at last year was backlog. And I ping Alberto. Uh, I thought it was a simple question, and usually when I ask a question to Alberto, he says, "Here's your visualization. I'm you're done." Right? But this one, Alberto came back and said, "I have to think about this." So uh, I thought I somehow stumbled onto a uh, more challenging visualization than I anticipated. So we'll talk about, you know, I'll talk about seven minutes about our use case at, at GitLab, and then I'll turn things over to Alberto. He'll talk more about the technical implementations. Uh, I'm I think I'm probably preaching to the choir because a lot of you folks are very passionate about open source. Uh, I mean, responsiveness to contributions from community members is extremely important, especially for projects that are based on, I mean, led by a single company like GitLab. Because uh, if, especially new contributors are just doing this after they submit their pull request or merge request, like this is not a good experience and really easy way for people to be discouraged and then leave and not come back. So. Obviously, that's not something you want to you want to see happen. Uh, and if you've been using Grimoire Lab for for a number of years, I mean, you you've probably seen similar like visualization. So it basically gives you uh, like a median or average time it takes for a pull request or merge request to be uh, merged into an actual product. Uh, so I got a couple of views here for GitLab, and the one on uh, your left, sorry. Uh, so this gives you like a media and open days for, it's called milestone here, but this is basically our releases. We have monthly release cycles, so for each release it tells you roughly how many, ta how many days it took for merge requests to be merged. And fortunately, ever since I've been here for about 18 months, it fluctuates between like a three and a half to five days, which I think is pretty healthy. Uh, so hopefully we can sort of maintain that good standard, but that's sort of the medium view days. And one on your right, sorry, it's, it's hard to see, but the slides are all posted. Uh, it gives you a list of all of our project repositories or different projects we have at GitLab, and it gives you an average number of days that it took for merge requests to be merged. Um, so these visualizations are very helpful because I can compare like between releases, right? If, for example, this hasn't happened yet, if, it, if it's been averaging three to four days, and all of a sudden for the new release, it goes to like 10 days and we may have a problem, right? So it gives me a, a little alert uh, that I should, I, sh I should probably look at what's going on. And even amongst projects, uh, I mean, there's a project like Runner. Uh, the challenge there has been, we pretty much had like two full-time engineers supporting community members on the Runner team. So that's why the, the number is uh, off compared to some of the others. Uh, but it gives me a chance to sort of you know, compare and contrast like between projects, like how things are how things are going. Uh, so this is great. This is an awesome tool that I that I probably uses more than than other ways to look at backlog. But the challenge is, uh, yeah, for the GitLab project, the average open days have been so far has been like a 14, 15 days. But what was it like about a year ago? or what was it like six months ago? It's hard to kind of visualize how that average number of days that things have been open, like progresses over time. Like, I don't know, it's, it's not obvious, like looking at that data, you know, if I'm improving or things were like better six months ago for whatever reason. Uh, so, so I wanted to, so I pinged Alberto and said, is there like a way to sort of look at the historical data and see how uh, that, the number of like backlogs have been like improving or you know, is are we pretty much the same? Uh, the reason why this was important last year, a couple of things have happened. I mean, there are a couple of different ways for your backlogs to grow. I mean, one is because you were able to attract a lot of contributors, your backlog just grows because there's a lot of inbound contributions coming in, uh, and that was sort of reflected on the chart on the right. Uh, we were about we, we doubled the number of contributors like last year from 2018 20 to 2019, which is great. But I was concerned about are we going to be able to di digest all of this that are coming in. That's one. Uh, two, uh, a couple of people asked me, uh, uh, you know, how many employees we have at GitLab. 
Uh, ever since I've been at GitLab, we more than triple the number of employees, which is great. So we're close to about 1,200 people now. Uh, but what happens is that it's, it's great that people are coming on board, but it takes people a few months to get productive, right, which is kind of natural. Uh, and roughly, I mean, it depends on your experience. For a lot of new engineers, it takes about two to three months to start being comfortable being able to review, like, community contributions. Uh, and our documentation team, I mean, when I started at GitLab, there were three technical writers. And when community contribution came in on documentation, they were able to turn things around within a day, unless it was like really complicated, like restructuring of the documentation, or it was a, like for a new feature. Uh, when, I were, when I triage him, I'll ping somebody like Evan and say, hey, Evan, can you look at this? And he'll basically merge it like usually within a day. And what I saw happen last year was that they hired like a two new technical writers in about a two month period. And if I ping like Evan, what he would do is he was doing the right thing. He would assign it to a more junior person that came on board so that that person had, can have experience managing community contribution. But it, it took more than a day, and which is natural, like for them to review and, and assign it back to Evan to do a final merge, right? So rather than taking it about a day, it would take about two to three days. So I was getting concerned about our, our ability, uh, our, uh, you know, ability to service all the community contribution that come in because this is happening across like different product teams, right? Or all the engineering teams, we're getting a lot of new people, and they're not able to like process these or review these as as quickly as more experienced people. So I wanted to see, you know, what's happening with our backlog as to is the, the, these two things are happening. And just one final slide before I turn things over to Alberto. So this this gives you a cumulative view of how what's what's happening with the backlog so I'll I'll explain the different colors the the ones in red at the bottom are those are showing like closed merge requests for whatever reason we decided to close them in this position uh, and the one in the middle uh, we have two colors of merge requests that have been merged uh, the one in blue I didn't even know about this apparently at some point we didn't keep track of dates of when the merge requests were merged. So the, the ones in blue are showing the merge requests that are merged without dates, and the ones in yellow are ones with dates. So basically, these two show the merge requests that have been merged. So what I've been focusing on is sort of that green band you see at the top. So, I mean, fortunately, there hasn't been a whole lot of fluctuation, but it gives me a sense as to, you know, is that is it the height of that green green area? Is that like increasing or decreasing over time? Um, so this has been pretty helpful in terms of sort of visualizi visualizing like how we've been doing. Uh, this again is an example for Runner because we were so resource constrained. I was I was concerned about this project. Uh, typically, like over time, we average between like a 250 or 260 MRs that are still like open, uh, and then. I think at some point, like a Q4 last year, we're starting to creep above like 300. So I wanted to see, if, you know, what was going on and see if we can, uh, what things that we can do to sort of expedite those or go through those backlogs. So I think I spent way too much time, but I'll think, turn things over to Alberto. Well, that's me, or it's intended to be me, <laughs> you can say. So basically, this is not my first Grimoala talk here in ChaosCon. But this is the first one I shared with someone which is not part of Victoria. It's an honor for me because we have been working a lot of time with, with Ray and now with GitLab. And well, the, the problem with the backlog we have in Grimoire Lab right now is uh, these dashboards are based on what remains open today. So you can see a lot of things here, but the problem is the question you're answering is, how many items created during whatever period of time you select here are still open today? And this is not the real backlog because you want to analyze the past. You want to analyze how the backlog was the previous month or the previous year or whatever. In other words, what we have here is these items here were created on these dates. This means this amount of items are still open and were created here, but this is not the real backlog. And that was the problem I faced when Ray yeah. talked to me 
to try to get the backlog out of the Grimoire Lab data. And it's not an easy problem to solve, at, at least not easy with the, the current data. But the problem is the limitations are uh, very strong here because we cannot analyze the evolution over time and we cannot analyze also the status of the backlog at a specific period of time. So, well, you have a vision, a view of your backlog right now, but anything else. And again, this is the question we are answering with the current uh, use case we have in Grimoire Lab. And now I'm, I want to uh, tell you about the human story about, uh, behind the scenes of uh, all of this process. The first <coughs> step was this. A couple of GitLab users probably uh, talking between them and realizing that the backlog is what I said and not what they expected. And the next step, as Ray said, was exactly this. The GitLab users <laughs> came to me asking about the, the backlog. Ray, about this uh, representation the one, the of GitLab users. It. I have to say that uh, I like to thank you to Miguel Angel for, for the art. It's yes. not my <laughs> so far right there. Yeah. And well, the next question was, what can I do? And of course, everyone know about this tip, don't know travel time, but I tried. I asked my boss, Manrique, I said, hey Manrique, I want to travel in time to get the backlog here. Manrique told me, yes, you can do it, but you need to send a talk. And I didn't have ta time to send a talk to that, so I directly tried to find another solution. Actually, there are different approaches. Uh, we followed the first one because I wanted to use the data we already had in Grimoire Lab. The second one was also evaluated, and now it's under review in, a, in an issue in Grimoire Lab because another user followed that. The second one is valid, but it's based on a new study. That means a new index, new data, and the problem of that is if I have to say to GitLab, hey, we can go for this, the next thing I, I have to say is, well, we need to maintain a new index, we need to create a new code, and we need money for all of this. This one is just doing thing, things on top of the data we, we already have. So, going quick uh, on uh, about the data, what we have is for each merge request, we have the time, the creation time of this merge request, and the date on which the merge request was merged or closed. With this data, what we can do is the cumulative sum of the items as they are created, and from, from this sum we can subtract the items that are closed or merged on each specific, specific uh, time range. The idea of doing this is relying on timeline. Timeline is a tool you have in Kibana, and you can do this kind of expression. Basically this expression says, hey Elasticsearch, took, uh, take this index, give lab merge request, and count all the eight items uh, depending on the created add field. So what you have here is the count of items, items that were created here. And this expression here is the cumulative sum of all of these. That means you have one here and two here, the total is three. So well, this is the typical uh, set you can expect if you uh, keep adding things from the beginning till the end. On top of this, we can subtract thing. Well, I think this is uh, obvious. And it's the same. Hey, Elasticsearch, from this index, you can take all the items that were closed or merged at a specific time frame and subtract them from the created ones. And on top of this, again, the cumulative sum. Well, with numbers, this means that if we open four items and we don't close anything, we have four. If in T2 we have three and we close two, we have uh, one new item to sum to the four we have. So we have now five items. And this T3 and T4 is just to let you know that you can close more things that you are opening. So in this case, you are improving your backlog and you are going to have less than before. And you can just get escalated in this other case. And this will be the final save of your backlog. Just a last slide for this. 
to subtract the, the corner case that Ray mentioned before for those items that were created even before the merge ad field even existed in GitLab. So this is the, the save we have right now and it's the same I saw before with only counting opening things. Here is the same because we are stacking the closer the merger than the corner case here. And if we just hide all of the closed and merged items, we have this backlog. This is just a double check of the data to make sure that all the calculations uh, are, being, uh, are correct. And finally, just as a recap of all of this, uh, we started this by solving the use case that Ray explained it with custom visualizations. From that, all the information is pro uh, publicly available. So you can go and read all the threads we have with GitLab. You can go to Grimoire Lab and read the issues. And in the future, you can go and read the pull request for a panel, which is the work in progress I mentioned here, because we need to build a specific dashboard around this visualization. And this is the ideal case for Grimoire Lab as a community, evolving towards metrics that are requested by the community and not by just by metrics that well, I have in my mind because, well, that's all. <laughs> Thank you.